This episode is made possible by Awin. Build, scale, and optimize your creator affiliate programs for maximum ROI with Awin. Leverage the platform's best-in-class technology and award-winning expertise in end-to-end influencer program and campaign management to your brand's advantage and drive impressive results. Visit awin.com slash emarketer to learn more. This AI-driven ad buying that both Google and Meta are offering are really driving some strong performance and are giving them a leg up on a lot of their competitors. And for that matter, have let them reverse some of the impact of the privacy rule changes from Apple. Hey gang, it's Thursday, May 16th. Yuri and listeners, welcome to the Behind the Numbers Daily, an eMarkets podcast made possible by Awin. I'm Marcus. Today I'm joined by our principal analyst who covers advertising tech and media. It's Yuri Wormser based in New Jersey. Hey Marcus, how are you? Hey fella, very good. How are we doing? I'm doing great. Okay, today's facts, sir. Uh, what's the record for the longest amount of time spent in space? Any guesses? Man, it's, some of these... Um... I think some of the Russian cosmonauts were there for over a year. I'm going to say 390 days. Jesus, how the? F- how did you know this? It's that was that's crazy close. So Russian cosmonaut Valery Poyakov holds the record for the most consecutive days spent in space at 437. So Yuri was just like a month off on board Russia's Mir space station between 1994 and 1995. Remarkable guess. The most days ever spent in space in terms of just total, not consecutive, is American astronaut Peggy Whitson holds a record for most total days spent in space at 665. It's nearly two years. That's a lot of time in space. Yeah, maybe not long enough. I think people who work with me think I spend a lot of time in space too. (laughs) No comment. (laughs) Today's real topic, revisions to this year's ad spending outlook. In today's episode, we'll cover what to make of the updates to this year's ad spending picture. Then for another news, we discuss Amazon shoppable videos and how many people are trying to block ads. But we start, of course, with the lead, Yuri. And the story here is that as of the end of March, Magna revised its four-year ad spending figure up from about 8% to about 9 Why? One major reason is an improved economic outlook. But Yuri, I wanted, first of all, your take to kind of, I mean, there's this backdrop of obviously the economy and how that influences ad spending. But do you agree that the economic outlook has given good reason to be more optimistic in terms of this ad spending revision upwards? I do. I'm, I think there are a couple of reasons for that. I mean, first of all, the first quarter GDP in the US was okay. It was, it was, it was I think it was around 1.6 or 1.7%, which is yeah. not super strong, but it follows a bunch of relatively strong orders. It seems like the economy is holding up pretty well, despite some expectations of a downturn. So I think the economy has more resilience. So in that way, I think the overall economic outlook in the US, which is still a strong driver of the international economy, is is looking pretty strong relative to what a lot of people thought it would look like Mm -hmm. um, a year or two ago. So yeah, I think an upward revision makes sense based on the overall economic situation. Yeah, GDP is the interesting one because you're right, it called off a little 1.6% recording. It's, It's technically its lowest number in two years. But economists weren't too concerned. They pointed to shifts in inventories and international trade. So they said it, it's not too terrible, even though it was uh, up 3.4% in Q4. So GDP decent, GDP growth uh, in terms of Q1. Inflation, Yuri, still very impressive. It's been below 4% now for nearly a year, even though it still feels like everything is going up 9 or 10% that we saw you know, a, a summer or two ago. Unemployment, that's been below 4% for nearly two and a half years. So employment numbers are still strong. The one thing that here that jumps out is just consumer confidence. It's still well below pre-pandemic numbers. And that's if you look at the conference board or the index of consumer sentiment from University of Michigan, both of them have consumer confidence below those pre-pandemic levels, which is a real kind of head scratcher as to why they can't get those numbers back up. And I think that's why there's a sentiment of things are better on one hand, at the same time, things don't feel like it. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting. And I agree, it's a real head scratcher. Part of it comes down to, I think, the inflation we had a couple of years ago, because although inflation rate is going down, doesn't mean the prices are going back to what they used to be. They're still high. It's just they're yes, increasing at a slower point. rate. So 
Everyone right. always sees the prices around and they're up, you know, a lot more than they were just a couple of years ago. So I think yeah. that's a big contributing factor. And you know, it's a, the country as a whole is pretty contentious these days. So I think there's a lot of contention over how the country is doing and that filters down to economic optimism as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. Especially inflation, because yeah, I mean, it's been below 4% for a, close to a year now, but it's still 4%. And, you know, in the summer of 2022, it was closer to nine, as I mentioned. But if you go back to 2020 and then, you know, back in time for a ton of years, it was right around 2%. And so even that 4% we have today is double what we've been used to for years and years. So it definitely uh, is a factor. Mike O'Connor. Executive VP of Video Investment at media agency Horizon Media, I think summed up things up quite nicely when he said, I can't remember the last time things felt stable. Yeah, he's kind of right there. I kind of share that sentiment. Other folks, though, you feel optimistic as well, not just Magna with their full year ad spending figure revision going up from 8 to 9%. Brian Weezer of Madison and Wall bumped up his expectations for this year's ad spend picture uh, from about 5.2 to 5.6. And Forrester expects healthy single digit ad growth this year as well. And it seems like a lot of that year is coming off the back of some pretty steady growth in the ad market. The US ad market expanding for its 11th consecutive month in March, up over 4% year on year, according to Guidelines US ad market tracker. We're going to play slice of pie for this question, Yuri. Why is the US ad market experiencing such a sustained period of growth according to these numbers? A couple of reasons. Well, three reasons to say I'm giving you a pie. I'd say the biggest single reason is just the economy recovering from a bit of a downturn of a year or two ago. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, we already discussed that. That is always going to drive the growth. So I'm going to give that 40% right there as the economy. Okay. You're seeing continued strength in the digital ad market, which is definitely contributing to the growth. It's coming at the expense of traditional advertising. So TV continues to go down with the exception of these presidential Olympic years. So we're actually expecting TV to be pretty flat this year. I think we were predicting a very small bump. But it, you know, if you're looking at a long-term trend, traditional is going down, but digital is going up pretty strongly and it's going up pretty strongly for two reasons. And that's going to be the other two factors. One is really strong growth among video and that's digital video advertising. That's driven by growth in CTV and over the top streaming services that are adding at a pretty high clip advertising. So most recent is Amazon Prime Video. Mm-hmm. They added advertising. But you know, most of these formerly subscription services are adding advertising. So that I'm gonna give that another 30%, sort of that really big boost into video advertising. And then you're also, I think, seeing a fairly strong growth coming from retail, both on the supply side and the demand side. So on the demand side, you're seeing retail continuing to grow pretty strongly as a buyer of advertising. Mm -hmm. And you're also seeing retailers expand their retail media networks. And that's just adding a lot of really high quality inventory to the ad mix and specifically in search. And Mm -hmm. that I'd say is the other 30% of those three. And then there are, you know, all these other Factors like social is growing pretty strongly too, but I'm not going to get into that since I think you just wanted to top three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good top three. 40% economy, 30% video ad spending, and then 30% retailers as a buyer of ads and also retail media as well in that final 30% that you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, talking about ad spending by media, digital up 13% somehow this year. It's the fastest growth of any media channel out of homes in second with 5%. Then TV in a very distant third, at barely 1% this year. I and mean, that's a good year for TV because of the Paris Olympics, uh, because of the Euro Cup going on. There's a ton of elections as well. And so, especially the one in the US, but uh, there are elections around the world happening this year. And so, that's giving TV a bit of a bump into the black, but next couple of years back into the red for TV, expecting it to drop quite sharply actually next year. And then yeah, radio print, everything else down. And this, I mean, this sustained growth from this stand tracker, this 11 consecutive months, the sustained growth dates back to April, 2023, the previous nine months before April, 2023, all negative. Uh, so quite the turnaround. And yeah, the most recent three months, aka Q1, 5.7, 11.2, 4.3, January, February, March, according to guidelines, US ad market tracker. And the digital ad players also had a decent Q1. Google grew ad revenue 13% in Q1, Meta up 27, and Amazon grew ad revenue 24%. But Yuri, what jumped out to you about the digital ad giant's performance in Q1? 
all three of them had really strong mm -hmm. orders. I think part of that is the continued influence of AI. So just performance max with Google, Meta's Advantage Plus platform, this AI-driven ad buying that both Google and Meta are offering are really driving some strong performance and are giving them a leg up on a lot of their competitors. And have, for that matter, have let them reverse some of the impact of the privacy rule changes from Apple. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those two really struck me. And Amazon is just really doubling down on a sponsored returns. They've introduced prime video advertising. Mm -hmm. So all three of them are really having strong years. Now, the one that's, I'd say the most surprising is Google's because Google has, there's been a lot of discussion on the impact of generative AI on search. That hasn't appeared yet. It hasn't really hit Google's bottom line in any way yet. And in fact, as I said, performance max and their use of AI is actually helping them. So mm -hmm. at the moment, it's still early. It's the long-term impact on Google search is to be determined. But right now, all three of them are performing very well. Yeah, it's a great point about Gen AI because, I mean, that could be cataclysmic if that, you know, changes how people search for things and then Google takes the brunt of that, then that could really affect their business. Also, they've got the antitrust case going on at the moment, paying Apple to be the default on its devices. That case came to closing arguments. And so ruling on that could also affect them. But yeah, for now, don't seem to be too terribly affected at all. Yeah. I was, and, and what all of these have, that's a huge advantage is they've got a lot of cash to be able to spend, to invest in these AI mm -hmm. tools, which just gives them another leg up on the competition. It's, it's a really built in advantage because it's it, these AI buying tools are giving them a price advantage and a performance advantage that's going to be tough to keep up with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. So it's a great quarters for Google, Meta, Amazon, a lot of the digital players, to be honest. We gave each of them an A, Google. And part of that reason is you're just a turnaround. I mean, if you look at where they were, a year ago, it's not like they've been crushing double digits for ages. Google, we gave an A because they turned Q1 ad revenue from flat last Q1 to plus 13% this past year. Meta, we gave an A because they did similar thing. They went from 4% growth last Q1 to 27% this Q1. And Amazon going from strength to strength, I mean, they grew ad revenue 24% up from the 21 a year ago. So just all around impressive. Zoom out and look at digital ad spending. For this year, we're expecting a 13% increase digital ad spending this year, up from 11% last year. That will drop a little bit next year because some of those events are going away, major events um, and other things. But 13% growth we're expecting for digital ad spend. And that's 78% of the pie. Total media ad spending pie, 78% is digital. And somehow growing, Yuri, I, I don't understand how there's any more room to grow, but that's today. 78% of the pie going to digital today, 85. So it's going to increase by seven more points over the next few years. Yeah, I mean, it's just a continued shift from TV to CTV, I think is really driving that. Yeah, great point. All right, fella, let's move to the fourth quarter of the show today in other news, Amazon rolls out three new shoppable video ad formats and how many folks use ad blocking software. Story one, ahead of Amazon's upfront week debut, the retail giant is rolling out three shoppable video ad formats. Notes our senior retail analyst, Zach Stambor. The three are number one, shoppable carousel ads. During prime video ad breaks, folks can use their remote to scroll through the items and add them to their Amazon carts. So shoppable carousel. Number two, interactive pause ads. Brands insert a translucent banner featuring brand messages and imagery when a user pauses a video along with a prompt like add to cart. That's interactive pause. And then brand trivia is the third type. Brand trivia ads. Companies share facts about their products whilst letting folks add items to their carts. For some offers, viewers can claim rewards like Amazon shopping credits, uh, Zach explains. The new ad format's coming just months after, as Yuri was saying, Amazon opened up a massive trove of inventory by making their ad supported tier of Prime Video the default setting for all subscribers. So the question, Yuri, is which of these ad formats do you find most interesting and why? I'm sure the answer is I find all three interesting. I think these shoppable ads are something- Cheater! I know. Cheating. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an answer, but, but I think these shoppable ads are a great move by Amazon. Uh, to me, the one that's most interesting is the pause one. And the reason is that hmm. it's non-interruptive. So the other two are, they interrupt you. You're not necessarily in a shopping mood, 
if you're seeing an ad in, you know, between shows or in the middle of a show, you're not necessarily willing to do a little quiz in that same situation. But if you're already paused, I think people are more ready to do a little bit of shopping. So I'd say that's the most intriguing of the three, but I think all three have got a lot of promise. Yeah. Great points. Story two. Over half, 52% of American internet users use ad blocking software. 52% writes our senior director of briefings, Jeremy Goldman. That 52% of folks who block ads is up from 34% in 2022. So from 34 to 52 in the last two years, according to ad blocker Ghostry. But Yuri, what do you make of this increase in ad blocking usage over the past two years? Well, first of all, the number is crazy. The majority of people use ad blockers, which I did not know before I saw that study. So that's really surprising. The second thing is it hasn't really dented digital ad spending. So the long-term impact of this, I'm still unsure. Clearly, Digital advertising is driving the economy, the media economy still. So the lesson for advertisers is that they need to make these advertising less disruptive. The made for advertising sites need to be phased out somehow. The advertising farm sites and did really high quality advertising will have a premium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why folks use them was also part of the survey. Number one reason for using an ad blocker, privacy protection followed by avoiding disruptive ads, followed by faster website loading speed. So they were the top three reasons why folks use ad blockers. And then I thought it was an interesting point as well, how strong of an influence the brands can have. The study showed that Google is still widely trusted by Americans for data privacy, despite being the biggest collector of data. I found that really interesting Mm -hmm. because they are, they're the biggest the mm-hmm. biggest uh, users, the government regulators don't think that they've been super <laughs> subtle with their use of it. So yeah, yeah. No, that, that was a really interesting finding. Yes, sir. Uh, that's what we've got time for for this episode. Thank you, Yuri, for hanging out with me today, my friend. Yeah, great to be here. Yes, sir. Thank you to Victoria, who edits the show, Stuart, who runs the team, and Sophie, who does our social media. Thanks to everyone for listening in. We hope to see you tomorrow for the Behind the Numbers Weekly Listen. That's an e-marketer video podcast you can watch on YouTube, made possible by Awin. You might like these then, Yuri, if you're a, you're a space guy. The shortest trip ever taken by an astronaut. Any guesses on that? Alan Shepard. Holy hell. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? Yes. Yeah. The May 1961, first American in space. I had no idea he was the first American in space. Yeah. 15 minutes. Yeah. Does that count? Probably. Uh, and then, do you know the first... If you get this, I'm walking away. Do you know the first person in space? Well, I mean, look at me. It's Yuri Gargarin. I mean, look at the name. That's fair. Oh, is that the only reason? It's not the only reason you know it. No, nah, I would have known it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. But yes, yeah, Soviet Union. Three weeks before at Mr. Shepard. Wow. Yeah. <laughs>